You may be wondering why I'm on r slash Sacramento Gone Wild, a subreddit for people to post naked pictures of themselves in Sacramento. It all has to do with Arch Linux, a simple lightweight distribution of Linux. This is a repo of Linux for people that really, really like to have customizable features on their Linux distro to make their Linux distro look like this. And unfortunately, Arch Linux is under attack. The Arch Linux user repository, or the AUR, has seen a variety of malicious packages get updated. The reason why the AUR is a much different beast than something like apt, for example, the apt package manager for Debian, apt does not allow anybody to upload packages willy nilly. It is an officially maintained package repo. Whereas this one, the AUR, is a community repo, meaning that anybody can kind of just upload packages however they see fit. Another difference is on apt, you upload the packages, which are pre-compiled binaries that are compatible with the distro of Linux that you're using. Whereas the AUR is a sourced repo, when you download AUR packages, you build them from source. Now, while the AUR is just source, a lot of the times the way this works is you run this package build binary, it's a bash script that tells the system how to build the given package. And behind the scenes, you know, that package build could be doing literally anything. It could be pulling down other pre-compiled binaries that already exist. Like for example, when you install Google Chrome via AUR, you're not gonna like build Chrome from source. That would take forever. You're probably downloading Google Chrome packages that are already compiled, using those to be installed with Pac-Man, which is a proper package manager, like apt on Debian that has already pre-compiled binaries. Now the packages we're talking about here are a couple. The ones getting the most attention are LibreWolf fix bin, Firefox patch bin, and Zen browser patched bin. These were removed two days after their upload on the 16th of July around 8 p.m. UTC, after a couple interesting things happened on Reddit. Uh, 12 days ago, so this is gonna be what, the 18th, there's this gentleman named Tim Horian 69 who says AUR is awesome. And previously before they deleted the post was actually linking his packages. So some weird kind of like, hey, come look at my malware. It's not malware, just trust me, bro stuff going on here. And then people, <laughs> they, they look into the package, you see Believer 007 here. If you go to the code, it says binary location equals location system D in it D. He's like, bro, why are you, <laughs> why are you installing your own version of system D in it D? This is obviously malware and then someone else making a similar comment. So if you dive down the, the post history of this Tim Horgan gentleman here, uh, you will quickly see it's a burner account for someone trying to spread malware, nothing too, you know, surprising going on there. Their only posts are like this, these AUR is so awesome posts. And then the r slash Sacramento gone wild picture, which, oh, I almost opened it for the video. All right, uh, which likely is not actually them posting themselves nude. What it probably is is they found something online illicit. They put it onto this subreddit to get updute points. They got seven updutes and three comment updutes to make this account look more legitimate so that they could post on r slash Arch Linux. Now this obviously is either one person with multiple burner accounts or a coordinated effort. You know, we don't really know the nature of how this all went down, but there are two actors at play, at least in a minimum here. You have, uh, you know, Tom Horton, Mr. Nudes and Sacramento guy, but then you also have Mr. Danny Kapapas, who is the one that submitted this package to use their account as well. And they say that it provides Firefox under the GPL MPL licenses. And while we can't stop zero days from happening all the time, one thing we can do is protect ourselves with multi-factor authentication. And my favorite solution is the sponsor of today's video, the YubiKey by Yubico. The YubiKey is a pretty simple way to keep yourself more secure online by adding an additional factor of authentication to your login process. Factors are things like something you know, something you have, or something that you are. Something you know is your password, like my password for my websites. But if that gets compromised, that single factor is now compromised and people can log in as me. Something I have is my YubiKey. Inside this YubiKey is a secret key that even I don't know. It is stored inside the YubiKey. When I use it to log into websites, the website asks the YubiKey to sign a piece of data and it checks that signature against the public key of the YubiKey that is associated to my account. My favorite part of YubiKey is how universally accepted it is. Literally, I can take this, plug it into my computer and most sites will accept this as an authentication factor. I use it all the time. And you can use my link below to get 5% off of your YubiKey. YubiCo, thank you for sponsoring this video. Back to the video, we'll see you there. What they're exploiting here, guys, is the nature of somebody that wants to download a package that may have an issue, right? Like they're trying to install Firefox, but man, I can't watch my Roblox videos on YouTube. Something about Firefox isn't working. So you go to run the package manager and you start auto-completing, you start tabbing around, and then suddenly bada bing bada boom, Firefox patch bin appears. 
that sounds pretty good. Let's use that and you install it and suddenly you're getting hacked. Now, what makes this kind of weird is that like there are a variety of open source rats or remote, they call it remote access Trojan here. The actual repo itself calls it a remote administration tool. It's kind of this weird dichotomy or like split, you know, information about is it a Trojan or is it just go to my PC? Anyway, there's this world of open source tools people can just go download and fork, maybe add their own functionality to, and then use that to act as malware. And what they get from this is like, they kind of blend in with the noise of the, you know, maybe hundred, maybe thousand other threat actors that are also using this malware. If you write your own little malware, it's gonna have its own signature, it's gonna have its own fingerprints, it's gonna be uniquely tied to you and your coding style. If Danny Kapapas or Tom Horton, what was it called, Tim, Tim Hugens, um, <laughs> If they use Chaos Rat and everyone else in their mom is in Chaos Rat, then you know they're gonna blend in with the noise. So with Chaos Rat, what they did is they set up the IP address to be this IP address here on port 8080, and it connects back over and allows you to do cyber espionage type stuff. We can look at the features here for the Chaos Rat toolkit. It's actually like pretty neat from just a pure like malware dev standpoint. From Linux, you're able to do a variety of things like get a reverse shell, which basically means that it calls back out to you and gives you command and control of that computer. You can download files, upload files, delete files, take screenshots, and then do a variety of other normal things you'd want to do as a malware author on a system. The uh, malware sample here is on VirusTotal, and I didn't download it and look at it because I don't pay for VirusTotal Pro, but you can see pretty quickly just by looking at the dependencies for the, the Go information for this, for this project, what it's doing. Uh, it, obviously, the fact that it imports and depends on Chaos Client means that like it is a Chaos Client, but even without that, right, you see like, hey, it has the ability to use shared memory, it communicates over WebSockets, it takes screenshots, and it uses the network. Like, that's either a really, really bad remote admin tool, or it's malware. Like, that really, that can really only go to two places. You can tell that it's Go, obviously, because Go Resim, the tool for reverse engineering symbols in Go, was able to extract all this info about the Go build for that project, but also the fact that if you kind of zoom out here, the uh, the size of the binary was six megabytes, which means either it is a statically compiled C binary, which means like it's just, it has all the goop and the gunk compiled into it, or it is a Go or Rust binary that doesn't depend on external libraries and instead bakes everything in internal. All of them by default are just statically compiled, which makes them pretty big. Now, the reason that I said that Arch Linux is under attack is because like, you know, it's, it's one thing if like one guy uploads one malicious package, like, okay, that's not a really big deal. But it seems like there is a concerted effort to upload multiple packages that have malware in them. So we have these three here, which target obviously LibreWolf, Firefox the browser, and then Zen the browser. They're targeting users of those widely known pieces of software to try to install patches to fix maybe issues that they're having, or just kind of like exploit someone's lack of knowledge about how package management works. But also this isn't the only one or the only set of packages that are malicious that got updated in the, in the same time period. You have this other guy, Quobelego, that guy, uploaded Minecraft Cracked, TTF All MS Fonts, TTF MS Fonts All, and Vestop Bin Patched. So while the Arch Linux security team did a very good job of like quickly removing those pieces of software and getting them off in a matter of days, two things are still wrong here, right? One, there, there's an inherent issue with the fact that people can just arbitrarily upload packages to the AUR. And while that's like probably a feature, not a bug, it does seem like a really easy way for users to kind of get exploited. This is the same problem we have with package managers like pip for Python or with uh, NPM for, for JavaScript, which basically like, you know, people are able to upload with minimal amounts of trust code that eventually will get ran on someone else's computer. And because of that, people are gonna get hacked. Yeah, like this guy says here, I think it is worth clarifying that the compromised packages were LibreWolf fix bin, Firefox patch bin, and Zen browser patched bin. And this is why it's so crazy, right? Like the actual names of the real packages are so close to the fake packages. You have LibreWolf bin, Firefox bin, Zen browser bin. All you have to do is inject a single word that is mildly contextually relevant and you're a single tab completion or typo away from getting the malware. Now, if you have installed these packages, you need to remove them manually. They're not going to, like all because they revoke a package from the AUR does not mean it gets revoked from your system. So you need to remove these right now. Uh, but again, it's just, it's super interesting that this is the, the nature of software right now. Like so many package managers are one insider or one trust boundary violation away from giving access to many computers out to many people. Don't just install packages willy nilly, whether it's a package in VS code, a package on NPM, or a package on the AUR, even apt, right? Go to the package, 
look at the maintainers, make sure it's a real package with real ratings from real people. Now, obviously in the world of AI, that's getting harder and harder, but I still think everything that is real has a human flavor to it, a human element that is very easy to smell. And you can also be safe online if you follow those rules. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this. If you didn't, my bad.